In this video, we'll use Resolve's latest relight effect on two completely different shots and compare that to my tried and tested pro method. Before we begin, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Let's jump in. So we're inside Resolve 18.5 beta. Obviously, the point of this tutorial is not to create a look, so I've already done that. First note, I'm doing a color space transform. This footage is shot on A7S III, which by the way, what an incredible footage to work with. Because even if you look at Rec. 709, it looks pretty good. And then obviously this is our log, uh, S log 3, and then um, Rec. 709, and then this is our graded version. Here I'm just doing uh, my look using printer lights and uh, some base stuff to kind of just pull everything up and make it look right. And then this is a bleach bypass slash 2383, Kodak 2383 LUT, which I will tell you in a little bit how to download. So you will get access to this. So just stay tuned. And then finally, we're just converting the footage from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709. So that's all that's happening here. And now we're gonna use the Relight tool. Because I like what I see here, but I just personally feel like we can bring this area out, right? So that would be the perfect opportunity to use Relight. But once we drop the tool, we're gonna mess around with it and see what else can we do. Can we maybe pull him up a little bit and add a little bit of like a fill light? So let's try it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna create a new node. And then here, I'm gonna type in Relight and drop that on. So the first one, when you drop it on, you gotta pull it down and this is gonna be used for output surface map, okay? So it's gonna go in and create a surface map for us. Let's create another node and pull this up, break the chain, and then here we're gonna drop the relight effect again. And then here what we're gonna do is that we're gonna feed it the clean in and then feed the relight surface map into the input two of this node. And then right here, I'm gonna change the surface map to input two, because that's where it's at, right? So now, by default, it gives you a point source. Look at the point source almost like an oval uh, power window. So that's just what's happening here. So it's still uh, different than the power window, but I just feel like the effect is very similar. So this is not gonna be that impressive. Like sure, it's gonna look good, um, you know, at first glance, but what I'm saying is like the overall effect is not like what this tool is meant to do. Uh, when you go under directional, that's where you start to see the magic. Like, look at this. So this is where it really starts to show, you know, the AI or the neural engine that's like kicking in and doing its thing, right? So that is pretty impressive, like how it's breaking up the scene in three axes, right? X, Y, and Z. And then we have a spotlight. Um, once again, you know, there's going to be a time and place for it, but uh, definitely not this shot. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm gonna leave it on that first, and then we're gonna make some changes so you guys can start seeing what's really happening. So I'm gonna turn this off, relighting map preview, so then we can see our changes. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go under my gain, and uh, let me just raise it up. So I'm gonna raise up my gain like that. I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here, uh, pretty raised, right? And you can clearly see the effect of like what this does. Pretty impressive. And then if we go back, we can start moving this around and you can see what it's doing. So like, look at that. It's a pretty sweet effect, right? Like even if we put it here because there's just not enough light here, right? So that just like gives it enough and it does a pretty good job. So that would be one uh, use case scenario. Now let's move on to the second style of using this tool. And in this one, I'm gonna click on Relight. And now what we're gonna do is that I figured out that the best way to do it is just turn this off and start moving this around and just see like what looks believable, what looks good, and then uh, go from there. So like here, I can go, oh, maybe I can just bring in some light from this side because like I mentioned, we just didn't have enough, see, we didn't have enough fill light. So this is kind of doing that. First of all, if I hit play, look what happens. Look at this. I have almost a $20,000 Mac Pro, okay? It's completely souped up, everything that you can throw at it, and we're getting a pretty terrible playback. So that is one thing to keep in mind. That means I have to cache my node. Now, take this 
multiply it to 200, 400, 800 shots, maybe over a thousand shots, depending on what type of project you're working on. And you get the idea how impractical this tool is, okay? So that is something that we have to keep in mind. As colorists, we're paid for not only our creativity, but our efficiency. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you, right? Like, so even if we put it here, like, oh, okay, impressive at first glance, but what really happens is that let's bring it here again. And let me just show you what's really happening that's like throwing me off. First of all, next to his pants, you see this halo that's being created. And even right here, like right here, it's very, very, like you can see it, how prominent it is. And now somebody can go like, well, go and mess with the settings. Let's go do that right now. So I'm gonna go under effects and let's see a few things, right? So brightness is just like how bright we wanna make it or um, how we wanna just like kind of pull it back or pull it down. And you, you're seeing that halo clearly now, right? So this is what I'm talking about, right? Even if we go back, you can see it here. Uh, contrast as it explains, and you can even see like what's happening here. You see this? And even when it goes away, it's basically there, but we can't see it because it's pretty toned down, right? Glossiness, what does that do? It just kind of blends everything in. So I kind of do like that effect. Specularity just adds a little punch. It's not bad. And then shadow softness, It's just like lifting everything up if we want, or we can turn it off. These are your directions, right? Whatever you want to do with it. And then this is like, if you want to go left or right, just quickly, right? Invert, basically. Left or right, invert, or up and down, invert. You can just do those really quickly. So let's park this here. And now what I want to do is, how about we create a new version? I'm going to delete these two. And what I want to do is I want to go back here, and this would be my approach to attack this shot. So I'm looking at it. Yes, it's a little contrasty on the low end. I want a little bit more information. So now we're gonna use the tools that pro colorists use. So in this case, what I would do is I would go under my HDR palette, I would go under my shadow and I would pick it up by half a stop. So as soon as I do that and I do before and after, like it does quite a bit of work, right? So I mean, we might be going too far. Maybe we can bring it back a little bit and keep it somewhere around here. So for me, this is doing a lot to lift up the entire shot. Another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new node. And uh, here what I wanna do is just keep it pretty simple. So I'm gonna create two windows. One is gonna be like this. I'm gonna hit Shift H so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'll just do that right here. And um, actually, you know what? Let's do a custom shape. So that's gonna be even better. So. Shift H again, and all I wanna do is, I wanna create a shape that pretty much just lifts this area up, okay? So I'm gonna go in my gain, I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna lift this up somewhere around here, and then I'm gonna go under my softness and I'm gonna soften it out like that. And if I go back in my window, all I'm gonna do is just track it. Tracking and resolve is, uh, second to none, okay? It's the best feature that Resolve has. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another uh, custom window and I'm just gonna do this, okay? So now we have that there and again, same thing. We're gonna feather it out enough where it just blends in and uh, let's go ahead and track it. I'm gonna track that and uh, before and after. So this is doing a pretty good job with that, right? Um, dodge and burn, keep it simple, okay? Dodge and burn, like nothing beats that. Try it and test it, works every single time. And now I'm just gonna create another window like that and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna tilt it, we're gonna pull it up, make it a little bit bigger like that maybe and then just feather it out quite a bit, just keep going. Something like that, I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna go under my gamma and I'm gonna pull it down. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. Let's see. Even something like that, maybe lift it up a little bit and use my lift to bring it down. Not too much though, something like that. So now you would be like, dude, you brought these areas up and then you brought them down again. What's the point? Well, the point is this, look at the difference that we made. So we brought out detail made the image interesting. This was just a blob, and then that was just a blob, and then we brought so much information here and enough information here, yet by creating the vignette, we took 
emphasis from everything else and directed our eye right in the middle. Now, if we go back to the other version and you can see it with the relighting effect, it created halos. It created a lot of mess, not to mention like how it's playing back. And again, keeping that in mind, like, you know, if we have five, 600 shots or something like that, what it would take compared to going here and uh, play it back. 24 frames, right? So uh, playing back in real time, you're ready to go. There are some key differences that I'm just not a big fan of with the real light tool. And uh, that doesn't mean that I don't think it's good enough. Moving on to the next shot. So this shot right here is filmed on Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So that's Rec. 709. And then this is our final grade. So I'm just doing a little bit here with my HDR palette, bringing it down about a uh, stop and a half, you know, to just take the sting off the highlights. And uh, that created its own problem where it just brought the image down so much that we can barely see anything here. So that is a great example to see what a relight tool does because it's advertised as like, oh, add a light where there isn't one. So let's see if it can do that because we're gonna be adding a light right here, okay? And then this right here, custom light that you can download, it is based off of the 500T 5219. And if you want to download that, it is included in my free webinar where you will also learn things like getting the best skin tones, how to shot match, the gamma shift issue, and there's so much more. So if you're interested, link is in the description. Definitely check it out. Let's get back to the video. Let's do it again. So I'm going to create a node. I'm going to drop relight effect right here. I'm going to change it to output surface map. I'm going to create another node. I'm going to pull this up, break the link. I'm going to drop that on. And then this time, again, we're gonna do the same thing. Connect this, connect that to input two, and then change this to input two right here. We are ready to rock. And now what we are going to do is, let's go back to directional. And this time, like, I'm just looking at where do I want the light? So I want the light somewhere around here, right? We wanna fill in the area where there is no light. And uh, let's uh, try it out. So I'm gonna kill this. And uh, now we're just gonna go under our gamma and we're gonna lift it up. So I'm gonna go too far and then I'm gonna pull it down. So, you know, in like just looking at it, first time is just like, oh my God, this is so great. This is perfect. He got so much light on his face. Well, look at all the other things that are happening. Like look at all the weird stuff that it's doing. So it just decided to miss this area right here. Okay. It, Pretty much added light here, but then missed the jacket completely or the sweater completely. It created this artifacting ghosting that's happening right here. It unnaturally brought up the dude in the front that we don't want. Okay. So it manipulated the image so much that I know by experience that stuff like that never, ever, ever, ever flies. Okay. When you're working on a project and you mess with the DP's image, and they look this much, they're gonna freak the F out. Not to mention another thing that's happening is that there is a little light flickering that's going on. So let's play it through. First of all, again, it's gonna be playing in one to two frames and look at it in the back. Like it's constantly moving. Like it's almost like there's a disco ball going on in the back, right? So look at that, right? So then what does this mean? Like, does this mean that the direction light is just not gonna work here? So then what's our option? Like, let's go with the point source. And as I mentioned, point source is very similar to what you can get with just a power window. So, okay, let's let's put that here and go back. And how does that look? So, I mean, this would be our option that's like somewhat realistic, right? Like it gives them some light. I just absolutely do not like what it does to everything else. Like what it does to the existing highlights, it just washes out all the colors. Like, look at how thin these, like his his hands look compared to here. Like there's so much meat in the colors, right? There's so much tonality and that's just kind of sucked out. So now what we have to like create windows and then track those, then what is even the point of using this, right? So, I mean, it's like, okay, somebody can say, well, move it around. Like, let's find a better spot. You see like how there's a spotlight here. We can't do that. So then what, can we extend this? Oh, and we extend that once again, it started to mess around with the entire image. Okay. So yes, like when you drop it on, it might look impressive, but just keep those things in mind. So again, let's create another version. Let's delete these. And this time what I'm going to do 
is just like the same time, I'm gonna go under my HDR palette. I'm gonna take my shadows and I'm gonna lift it up to about half a stop. And I personally think it's doing things, right? So like if I were to um, kill this and then go back, I think it's starting to bring up some information. So I'm happy there. I'm gonna create another node. And then here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom shape. And uh, this, time, this time we're gonna have fun. We're gonna create a very crazy type of shape. So we're gonna create something like that. And then let's just uh, extend it a little bit. So I'm gonna extend it to something like this. Okay, we're gonna see if this doesn't work, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna mess with it, right? So I'm just gonna go here in my gamma and I'm gonna lift it up like that. And then we're gonna take the softness and we're gonna blend it. And then I'm gonna pull my gamma down a little bit. So we're gonna keep it maybe somewhere around here and uh, let's go ahead and track it. So I'm gonna track it back. I'm gonna track it forward. Okay, and uh, so check this out. Look at this compared to this right here. Look at how much of my image got manipulated. And like I mentioned, this is gonna freak every DP out, okay? Skin tones are out of whack. Things are playing back at two frames a second compared to right here. Everything stays exactly how it's supposed to be. Look at like the guy in the background, everything, like look at this, look at the hands, right? Everything looks so good. And just by the tried and tested dodge and burn, we brought out exactly what we wanted and uh, we got the results that we were after. The moral of the story is this, focus on the basics and perfect that over getting distracted by all the new tools and plugins. If you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified about future videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.